prioritize? It's not any particular thing. So the particular thing is the prioritization. So it's not a method. I can't tell you how, other than that I can demonstrate what it looks like and what it feels like to be a prioritist, to have your priorities straight, to seek the creator above all else, that, to see that anything else is vanity, anything else is postponement, anything else is distortion. So seek the creator, the original one infinite creator, inside your very own consciousness, as your very own nature. Seek that directly, both through direct recognition of the source within, going deeper and deeper in meditation, and through sourceful play, sourceful redesign, sourceful investigation, sourceful living in action. So those are the two ways, but the, the thing to get is that you need to access, you need to penetrate into a well within yourself that prioritizes this above all else. What do you need to prioritize this? Do you need 108 more lifetimes of suffering and confusion and scatteredness and vanity and seeking validation? Do you really want to repeat this cycle over and over and over again? To what end? Ask yourself to what end? What I've always been really good at is, well, I think I want that, but why? And then what? And then what? And then what? You know when a kid asks why? Well, because of this. Well, but why? Well, because of this. Well, but why? It'd it be like that. And I was like that. I was, you know, in certain situations, I, I kept asking my parents, like I wouldn't, um, I, I wouldn't, I just, why? Why? Kind of annoying, but you gotta be annoying because you're only annoying to the constructs that have been created. You know, you're showing them that they're all based on assumptions. People settle for a conclusion and then that becomes the reality. But conclusions can never be real. It's the ever fresh diving in, investigating, seeking the creator that needs to be prioritized. And then there is no how, doesn't matter. That is your meditation, you see. So prioritize. And this is exactly actually to, to tap into it briefly for those that are interested. This is exactly what the shepherding program is designed to do, is to, to answer your first question as well. Um, how to purify the work so that it, you become the vision and not the person that has a vision or a person that owns the vision. Does it make sense? Because then, you know, the vision will have to pass through your distortions in order to manifest, and then it'll just be about you. It won't be the vision anymore. So we see the vision, we get really excited about it, but usually why we get really excited about it is because of what it can mean for us. Like, oh, then I'll be the best spiritual teacher in the world. Or, oh, then I'll be recognized for my skills. Or, oh, then I'll be, like, rich. Or, then I'll be famous. Or, then I'll be this. Or, then I'll be recognized. Whatever it may be anything along these lines. But if you can come to a point where you can sacrifice your self-image, and this is what will be asked from you in the shepherding program. And I set the intention that all who join the program will attract challenges in their lives that force them to choose between the fake and the truth. So that is set, that's my intention, and it will happen for those that participate. Just be mindful of that. This is not just a program where I want as many people as possible to sign up. I want as many people as possible to sign up as long as their commitment is really true. Then by all means, let's have as many people as we can sign up because the more powerful leaders, the better. But the qualification is purity. The qualification is true desire. When I sense that that being has the capability within them, and some have it more manifest, and for others it's still more hidden, but if I sense there is hope for that being to purify themselves and to become the vision, to transcend the personal needs and preferences and biases and some wants, for the sake of becoming the greater good of humanity in energy and frequency, in state of being, in state of consciousness, in action, in thought, in feeling, in breath, in everything. You know, so that's the work that we're doing. That's what it means to become a shepherd. There's the person, then there's the shepherd, then there's the mirror. They're just, you know, they're sort of arbitrary lines that you can place wherever you want, but I place them pretty high, both of them. 
You know, people go around and say like, oh yeah, I'm a shepherd. Well, actually, no, probably not. Or, yeah, I'm a mirror. I recognize that. What you've been speaking about, you know, I've been that all my life. No, actually, you've not. Not even remotely have you been that all your life. You know, the first one to claim they're a mirror are the last one to actually be one. That's the case with, any, that's the case with anything. That's why that kind of dialogue is so difficult. Like, who's ready to be a part of this, really? The first one to raise their hands usually aren't. So there's a scouting process and a natural, organic, vibrational selection process that occurs where those that are truly meant to be there, they will be seen and recognized. But it happens through a process of no self-boasting. It happens by staying true. And the universe will bring us together. Do not worry about that. And this is not your typical interview apply here. But the shepherding program is also a way to filter out, meaning those that are willing and ready and resonate are already of a certain level, even if they're not as ready as they believe they are, like, oh yeah, I'm a shepherd, let me sign up for this. Might be a lot of vanity in that still, but the very fact that they do feel some level of resonance is already a step up, is already some filtration system, uh, filter. That's why I created tier one and tier two, because I wanted to to work closely with a smaller group of people that I have personally reviewed and approved, so to speak. See, like, yeah, there is something there to work with. There's enough there to work with to really go in depth. Um, and tier two being, it's more open to anyone that wants to apply that resonates with this material. And they can learn as much, sometimes even more, than someone that's part of tier one if they really put their commitment in. But if someone signs up for tier one, they get rejected, referred to tier two, and then they no longer do it, shows me that they weren't meant to be part of tier one anyway, because it was about vanity. If you really care about this content and about this purity, you'll do the work whether or not you get the attention from me. But if suddenly like, oh yeah, then well, that sounds kind of boring. Like, it'll just be the content. It's the same content you get as tier one. You get that? And suddenly you're no longer interested that shows you your vanity, you weren't in it for real reasons. If you wouldn't sign up for tier two, if I rejected you for tier one, you're not suitable for tier one. And maybe I did accept a few people that are that nature, we'll see. But then there's a reason for that too. I trust that. So those, you know, even if you're not in tier one, but you really are willing and committed, tier two, you, you can get as much, if not more, out of this. And then that will show itself over time. Those that are true, I will, no, I will notice over time. We will notice. It will be noticed. It will fit in. Those that are not true will not fit in. That's one of the skills that we have. That's one of the most potent skills that we have is to be a vibrational radar. We're protecting the vision vibrationally. And so this is a filtration process, and I created this platform and this program to make that more obvious and to give sort of a leeway to begin the process. And I'm, no, I'm in no hurry, I'm in no rush to find the right people. I've learned my lesson with that. Just accepting anyone who's willing that's a friend is disastrous, actually, in many ways. So if they're not ready to understand the vision, if they're coming at it from a person, then they're just not ready to work with us at a, at a close level. They may volunteer on the periphery, but they will not be embraced in the core because it's just not vibrationally compatible. And the shepherding program, among many other beneficial reasons, such as generating leaders, making a big difference in the world, upgrading the consciousness of those that are able to also upgrade other people's consciousness, etc., helping wanderers remind them of their true nature, there's so many beautiful reasons to what made this a reality, this program. But one of the reasons is to provide a platform to make more visible who is ready to potentially stream into the next thing after that, and who isn't. And we'll know, you don't have to fake, you don't have to pretend, you don't have to try hard at all. If you're really, really true, that resonance will find the bigger vision, the bigger organization that will be... Um, collaboration in some way. Mm -hmm. 
So, how to purify the vision within yourself? Because you all have a vision, you're all plugged into something. You're all carrying some code to the blueprint of the collective's benefit. Do you feel that? So, it may be filtered and distorted through vanity and through insecurity and through past abuse, self-abuse and abu abuse by others. So you may filter it through like needing a lot of validation and that's why this work is so important. And that's why what we've been focusing on so much as well is really getting super clear on the ground work. And you'll see this will endlessly benefit you. Because we don't really have to teach you bliss. If we can teach you where you're out of alignment, bliss will teach itself, it will arise by itself by the very nature of you clearing out your closet. Hardly ever is it about becoming something. It's almost always about unbecoming what you're not. It's usually a much more direct approach in many ways. So you've been doing beautiful work and we encourage that you continue to do that beautiful work and I guarantee you it will not be done overnight. It will continue to be a process. But you'll feel so amazing every time you purify yourself. Not as a person, you'll just feel true, you'll feel plugged into God. You feel plugged into the vision. And every time you do that, you delete a little bit more of your person identification. <laughs> and you replace that with vision identification, or beyond that, identification with all, and or nothing at all. The mirror. But let's focus on the shepherd, which is more accessible. It's more of an immediate access point which is consciousness that shifts from identification with a body, mind, person living for its own personal security and gratification and validation and needs and wants to actually plugging into a vision and becoming that vision, breathing that vision, having your motivations come from I being identified with the greater good of all, which is the vision. So when I stated an enlightened civilization by 2035, or a happy planet by 2035, or an awakened people, awakened civilization by 2035. It's not my vision. You get that? It's all of our visions. It's the vision of all 7.5 billion people plus several billion cosmic beings. It's the vision. It's the vision that is built into the collective at this particular space timing nexus of where we're at in the cosmic evolution. It's, it's an all comprehensive thing like clockwork. This is where we're at. If you can read the clockwork and understand the clockwork is why you're here not to validate your little petty needs, then you can become a shepherd. You can become an ambassador for that vision. And throughout that process, you'll continue to have to purify yourself. Where am I coming from? Not just what am I talking about and look at how cool I am talking about it. And I'm serving the greater good because I'm talking about it. No, you can talk about it and completely be in the vibration of self-gratification and not actually benefit at all. You'd still be polluting the earth, its energy field. And with that also its manifest form. Do the work, do the work, do the work. Those who are more excited about doing the work than anything else are ready to be shepherds. They're ready to go into this program. And really, that's what we're focused on. Actually upgrading you. Like it's no use to have a program like that if it's all theoretical or hypothetical. We actually have to get in there as if you were in a personal relationship with me. Not quite as intense, but almost. Not quite as intense simply because I can't be that close to you all the time. But you can ask any of my ex-girlfriend and those that are still sane and can still speak will tell you that it's intense. I'm exaggerating a little bit. So that, you know, it's not for everyone. So if you're ready for this, if this excites you, if this makes fucking sense to you, then find a way to be part of this program, at least here too. Give the world this gift. Give yourself this gift. And yeah, you'll have to pay for it. It costs money. Big deal. Manifest some cash, dude. You're not incapable. You're not helpless. 
Ask your family, get a credit card, I don't care, whatever you do. Rob a bank. <laughs> it's worth it. There's so many ways in which you can just attract this if you decide this is for you. Okay, if money is an obstacle, another filtration system. That's why it's not actually, you know, part of me has always wanted to give everything for free, but I've learned actually that's not the most productive way to go about it. If you can't commit, if you can't even generate $2,500 over the course of six months and free that up for the most important thing in your life and the most important thing for planet Earth, you're not even fit remotely to be part of the shepherding program. You're not disabled to generate $2,500 over the course of six months. None of you here are, and if you believe you are, you're not remotely ready to be part of that program. So it's another threshold, it's another filter. So I don't have to select. You see, like we're generating a platform that filters out 90% of the people that say they're all for this, but they're not for planet Earth. They're using spirituality for their own benefit. Nothing wrong with that up to a certain stage. You know, you don't blame a toddler for playing with dolls. You appreciate that there's a time and a space for everything. But if we're saying this is what we're about, then we'll expect you to demonstrate that. And if you shy away from money, or from exposing yourself in the group, or want to ask me your questions secretly in private, you're not ready. And that's okay. It's totally okay. It's just not what the program's about. It's still perfect. It's still a child of God. You're still unconditionally loved. And in any other situation, we'd hang out and, depending a little bit on your distortion, we'll have fun. <laughs> you know? And there's love there, and there's patience, and there's compassion and understanding. But inside the context of a relationship with me personally, whether as a partner or otherwise, not open for applications, by the way. <laughs> um. <laughs> or the container of the shepherding program, the Civilization Upgraders program. Inside of that container, I'll be what it takes for you to become that version. And that's what I'll gauge you by, and that's not judgmental. It's observational, it's purely reflective, and it's for the highest good of all. And if you say that's what you're about, then I'll reflect everything in you that's lying. If you can't take that, don't sign up. If that excites you more than anything, even if it scares the shit out of you, sign up. Manifest the cash, register. Be part of it, make a fucking difference. Sorry, get a little carried away. <laughs> so how do you become the vision? It's a matter of desire. You want nothing else more. You recognize the ease of this difficult choice. You recognize how liberating it'll be to put everything on the line how you're tired of protecting yourself, how you're tired of managing your future, how you're tired of being scattered, how you're tired of saying you're about this but not really being about it and then saying you want this but not really having it and then complaining and then pretending to be spiritual but really feeling victimized. If you're tired of that, then make the tough call for an easy, liberated existence. Fall in love with the work. And I guarantee you there's nothing more exciting than to become a symbol rather than a person. You know when Christian Bale returns from his journey and Batman begins in the Himalayas or wherever that is, he receives his training from Ras al Ghul and he meets back with, I actually put that, a quote of that movie, one of the characters of the movie, on the Civilization Upgraders for Henry Ducard one of the characters of the movie. And he meets back with Alfred, his butler, in his private jet. And he's talking briefly, he's talking about, you know, as a man, I can be destroyed. But as a symbol, I cannot be destroyed. If you're about the vision, if you become something else, something other than just a man or a person or a woman, then you become immortal. If you become identified with the vision, you immortalize yourself. 
you see? As long as you keep identifying with the body, you will be reborn, because that's what you believe. If you become the vision, you will ascend to that process of devotion and commitment. You will ascend this game. And from a space of being more ascendant than the majority, you can be a window into possibilities. You can show them what they're capable of. Absolutely, there's a difference between you are perpetuating it. The shepherd knows this kind of stuff. The shepherd has become the vision, has become the equal vision of all. And thus then, they will show up in powerful ways. And when they have to, they'll stand out no matter what that looks like. And again, you will get challenged throughout the course of these six months and beyond in your personal life, in challenges that your higher mind will tailor exactly to your needs and weaknesses and challenges to upgrade you. Okay, it's a civilization upgraders program. It's not easy. But that's why the container is there. And there's nothing else like it out there. So that's my sales pitch. Go to civilizationupgraders.com and if you're for real, click the button. And if you're for real about something else, don't click the button. Either way, you're for real. You're loved and we're all equal. No problem. We can walk on the beach and be happy together. But if you sign up, you know, I'll be there for you completely. And I'll over deliver in other ways that aren't stated on the website will become family. If there's a difficult time, we'll make sure that you get out to where you need to get out to. You know, because you're committed, we're family. If you're committed like that, to that extent, both financially, energetically, vibrationally, and you're on board, and you're doing the work, then you're part of the family at a level that we can manage to give our full attention to, to make sure that everyone in that program has exactly what they need. That's why it's small, so that we can manage that or relatively small. And you will find that the other shepherds do the same. Those with more means in one area will support the others. And those with more means in that area will support them. And there will be the symbiotic prototype of a fourth density social memory complex civilization. And we're upgrading together and we're amplifying. And or if you're not ready for this, just continue to do the work on your own. Also fine. If you want to be in your own bubble in a certain way and that feels more resonant, nothing wrong with that. Go watch more YouTube videos. Go watch retreats. Expose yourself to this stuff. Do the work. Do the practice. And maybe at some point you'll feel ready for it. There's nothing wrong with where you're at. You just have to know where you're at and then accept that and love that. Don't pretend that you're somewhere where you're not. But if it's a little scary, it doesn't mean you're not ready. It probably excites you. So see if you can see that in an exciting light and realize that you are ready. It is only you that say you're not ready. Is it a one-time deadline? I might close tier one approximately one month after the first session. Uh, but I think I'll keep tier two open and it'll just be your own choice to sign up a little later and have missed some of the live sessions, but you can watch the recordings, uh, catch up in your own time, um, and then watch the live sessions as they unfold. So that'll be your own choice or responsibility to have a slightly altered experience than the one that I intend to generate. But it, I mean, it'd still be massively powerful, but, uh, you know, that's, yeah. Uh, the first session, so tier one is the live participants on the actual call that I interact with personally. That will be April 15th, so in a few days from now. Um, so if you want to be part of tier one and not miss the first session live, you should sign up today. Ideally, because it takes also some time for your application, for you to fill out your application, make your short little video, and for me to review it. And I'm, you know, I've got other things going on as well. So if you want to join now, I recommend you do this 
this afternoon, or by the latest this evening, download from civilizationupgraders.com, download the tier one um, thing. Don't be offended if you're not approved. It's really intuitive. It's not even that I judge, like, ah, oh, yeah, look at the way they speak. It's not that. It's I just tune in. I'm empty. <laughs> you speak. And there's a sense of this is relevant for this person at this timing and for the group, or it's not. And I've actually denied some people that are linearly speaking uh, a little more advanced than people that I have accepted. So it's not black or white, and don't take this meaning to be black or white or personal. It's just whatever comes through as this is authentic right now. Um, but then again, tier one, if you're really excited about the program, tier one would also, ex sorry, tier two would also excite you. Because it's not about vanity, it's about actually you becoming the vision. And then that will grow into other things, and you can also get picked up from that in, in a more concentrated way later on. So, um, and then that session is recorded and will be transferred to tier two one or two weeks later as a recording. So then the tier two group will receive access to that. And as of right now, tier two is actually a smaller group still. We just sort of recently opened that. Uh, than tier one. Sweet, any other questions about this? Is it just a one-off or is it being repeated again? The program, you mean? Um, I don't know yet. We'll see how it feels for me. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Can't promise that there will be a follow-up program. And if there is, it'll probably be different. Or it'll be for a selection, out of the selection. Um, but it's possible that this will continue or be repeated in some way. But right now, I feel it's improbable. I feel this is what it is, and I'm never really excited to repeat myself. So just knowing myself from the past, I'll give everything I have to this, but I will not feel like I can repeat it or want to repeat it. So then whatever I create from that point will be different. We'll have a different intention, we'll have a different group, we'll have a different energy about it. So this is, in that sense, a unique thing. Um, maybe we'll be able to make it available later as like a product rather than sort of a living, breathing, uh, time-released experience. Maybe it would be like a recording product that people can download. So in that sense, it could be repeatable. But I don't think I'll do the same thing again, if that makes sense. Because then I can just hand them the recordings if needed. And they can learn through that way. I don't have to repeat it just for that time frame. So this is a unique opportunity in that way to be part of the creation of this content. And then move into whatever is next after that, potentially. It's all online, but for tier one, there will be one or two events. And like we did now, uh, like tier one got reserved as a first row, for example. Uh, we went to dinner together yesterday. So that sort of family feel is, is starting. Uh, they had free access to this event in person. They have free access to the event in um, July in person. So like I said, there's, there's, a, there's a, what you would do for family is what I feel inspired to do for those that are so committed that they're willing to pay that amount of money and commit to six months. And I just feel their vibration. I feel they're all in. Then I'm all in. Then you're my family. Um, and if not, then you're still my family, but I don't have the personal energetic resources to take care of everyone like that. So with tier one, we will plan an event that's just coming together with tier one in person as well, somewhere down the line of the program. Maybe something like that can be generated for tier two. Um, not sure yet, we'll see. Uh, what if people want to switch from tier two to tier one? Sorry? If they want to switch from yeah. tier two from, to tier one? From, from tier two to tier one. They could request that and then they'd have to download the application um, form, fill out the questions, submit the video and uh, then I would review it. Yeah, it's possible for sure.
So one of the things that I loved hearing this week was in, con in, in the conflict, there's love. Sorry? So one of the things that I loved hearing this week, that in the conflict, there's love. Mm -hmm. So I guess my question to you is more about your mission. Like, my, do my you, mission. the mission of the program, like, do you feel, like, what's the mission? Is the mission to have the people in the program wake up more? Is the mission to help the people in the program teach others to wake up more? And do you, I'm just curious, um, feel like we're here to fix a broken world or we're here to collectively wake up and ascend? Because for me, a lot of the hell in a handbag outside, the, the craziness of the world brought me back to my source. Mm -hmm. Like it's the thing that brought me back to my source and who I am in the, in the midst of all this chaos. So I guess, I guess it's two questions. The first is, is it an individual attention to keep awakening? Mm -hmm. or, and where do you go with that with others? Yeah, it's, it's all of that. So it's a, plat it's a very all comprehensive platform for, I guess if you had to state a broad intention, it is, well, it would be to generate civilization upgraders. So everything that that entails and has to include to generate shepherding consciousnesses. It includes personal awakening, transformations, letting go releases. It includes rap radically redesigning the very architecture and environment of your life to match the true intention that wants to come forth. So it's a very hands-on thing as well in your personal life. It includes metaphysical truths and super subtle balances um, about the different densities and the overview of cosmic evolution because that's what I um, feel Civilization Upgrader is aided by to have a bigger perspective that's not just from within this matrix of what works, but also has the bigger perspective so that what works can be plugged in appropriately and guided appropriately from the bigger perspective so we're not operating blind. Um, it includes the community coming together and then coaching and empowering each other, supporting each other, generating family, cohesion, uh, beginning the experience of social memory complex to whatever extent that is probable, which is to be in a telepathet telepathic communion as a group, to become a group consciousness, the very beginning stages of that. It is to be a representation both as individuals as well as a group for 3D Earth and humanity to look and feel what it's like to live as a 4D community and replicate that by being inspired by the example. It is about you as an individual, um, then being able to also take this out into your life and do the work you are designed to do that's in alignment with why you're actually here. So it's that way too. Um, and then that can also lead into group, group led projects that we can co create together. Because if you've been together for you know, several months or at the end of it, end of it, you know, it'll continue after the end of it too in some ways. It's not really, it's kind of open-ended. But six months of we promising to provide content and it's already been more than that. Um, so imagine a group like that coming together so intensely under the same vision, becoming the vision, and then having that power available as that group to actually move mountains out in the world, even knowing that it's only a reflection of the work that we do in consciousness. But then we have this powerful group with which to vote and take action and contribute. And when there's a project, everyone can help take action in their own way as it resonates with them. So it's both collective and individual, depending a little bit on the, on the person you are and to what extent you want to plug into that or to what extent it's for your own awakening. Either way, you can utilize this program. But you will be encouraged to also think of and deeply ponder how you can be of service to others. Did that answer both questions? It did, thank you. Yeah, cool.